Okay, everyone. Hi. Uh, sorry I missed you last week. I was busy, but today we're here with Tico Steve. He's from Tico Solutions, um, all about tent washing, and I'm sure he knows other stuff about washing. But uh, this is Tico Steve. Why don't you introduce yourself real quick, Steve? Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Tico Steve. I own Tico Solutions. Uh, we deal with everything tent cleaning from hand washing, chemicals, small tools to really big washers for high production people. We got in this business over 20 years ago. Uh, my wife and I scratch started a party rental business in 1997. And by 2001, we sold our first washing machine and then everything was history from there. Cool. So for people do, who do not know what a tank washer is or have ever seen one, they're these huge things. They look like this. This is a bad graphic, but um, this is this is what you make. This is actually one of yours, right? Correct. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So. Why don't you explain what that does? I mean, it's kind of obvious it's a washing machine. It's got those three things in there that are fourth. I, I don't know what you call those, those fins. I call them fins, exactly that. Okay. You know? So uh, how's the whole thing work I and mean, what's it designed to do? So it's really, really simple. You know, basically what you saw there was a big cylinder with the door that was open. So you can, that, one, that particular machine's big enough where you can actually take a big like 60 by 30 pole tent and then take a fork truck and put it in there. Um, if you fold it up a special way and you put some chemicals in there and you close the door and fill it up full of nice warm water and it, it'll clean. You rotate it around very slowly. It's a lot slower than your regular uh, linen machines and it'll get the thing really clean every nook and cranny um, because you're using warm water and a, and, a, and a very intense chemical. And then more importantly, you can sit there and rinse it off a couple of different times. So it's a little different style than, than hand washing gets it deeper, gets it done deeper and gets it done a little quicker. Um, you know, machines are, are typically for kind of medium, larger size companies who have bigger volumes. And uh, so it's a good fit for them. And we're going to talk about later. There's other fits for smaller companies that they can mechanize uh, easier too. It may not be a machine. Uh, but, and we'll get into that in a little bit later, I'm sure, Adam. Right. Yeah. I've, like we were talking before, I've had experience with your machine. I've been using my friends for a while and I've sent tents there that are really bad, really bad, and they come out looking brand new. It's a, it's a good yeah. it's a good process. So you said about the folding it specially though. Um, that's the what you call the accordion fold, right? Correct. So and uh, most people know that. Well, if they, it's got any structure tense when you know, when your when your uh, fabric comes off the structure, uh, you, it tends to lay on the ground in kind of a fold, a zigzag, if you will. Um, and what that does is it allows the, uh, let's see if I can duplicate that real quick on a piece of paper I've got, but I'll try to do that. You can see right here on my piece of paper, it's a zigzag fold, right? So when we fold the tent up like this, um, quick, quick demonstration, we're going to fold it like that. Let's say we're 20 by 40. We just fold the 40 foot side and then we would take that piece of paper and we'd fold that up like this. Another another accordion fold the other way. Kind of layout like that. And then put that whole thing in the wash machine. So what that allows is the soap, to, soap and water to get in the in those folds, wash, and equally important, take all that dirt back out of there when it rinses. So it does that on all every square inch of the tent. Right. If you just took your tent down, rolled it like normal, and threw it in there, it, it's going to be clean in some parts, but you're going to see creases of dirt and stuff still because the water That's is not going right. to penetrate. Yep. If you didn't get it folded up right, um, or you didn't get enough water in there. It'll look like a zebra when you come out of there. Right. And you have different sizes too. It's not like someone just has to buy your one size. You have ones that do 900 square feet, 1,250, like yes, different we do. sizes. We redid our, our, our lineup about 18 months ago, really kind of lined it up more up with the, 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 the type of company and the company's needs. You know, we've got companies that run the machine literally 10, 12 hours a day, six, seven days a week. You know, these are companies who are doing big PGA tours. They need a very large machine. Uh, they need uh, a lot of automation. Uh, it was, and we also have companies who, you know, maybe start the machine two or three times a week in their busy time. You know, right. they don't need all the automation. They just need a machine that's going to be small, take care of their needs, and kind of bulletproof. So, and then there's the medium-sized company who needs a little bit of automation uh, and a little bit bigger machine. So, kind of dialing it into the business needs of a company. Right. Yeah. If I were to get one, I would get um, one that can hand handle a 30 by 60 all yep. my 30 by 60s are one piece and yep. with that being what is that 1800 square feet yep uh then it can handle you know your 40 wide mids as well yes 
Yes. Right. That would be our classic 550, uh, which would have been machine for you, you know. Right. So yeah. that that's mechanical. That's kind of the expensive. Let's talk about the, um, you know, medium and smaller companies who don't really have the capital or don't want to get into a tent washer just yet. How would, what are your, your methods on cleaning tents for us? Because right now it's cleaning tent time. You clean tents, hang them or just dry them somehow and get them away for the winter. Yes. Um, I think there's a lot of things that people can do if they don't have a washing machine. Um, that I, when I walk into shops where people are washing tents, um, I see often uh, people not getting as clean as they could because they don't select the right chemical. Okay. Uh, one of the things I think people don't understand is, you know, Adam, the dirt you guys have up in the New York area there is different than the dirt I have in St. Louis. And my dirt's different than somebody in San Diego. You know, we have different climates. We have different type of soils. We have different industries. So our tents uh, may look all the same in terms of dirtiness, but the, the, the soil composite on them is different. And that requires different kinds of chemicals, right? Okay. So people will tend to buy one chemical as a kind of a fits all. And it somewhat works, but if they spent a moment just kind of doing a simple experiment to find the right kind of chemical, that would allow them to get a deeper clean and scrub a lot less. So that's the number one thing that I see that could be improved in any hand washing operation is to spend time and do a little homework. Take about a half a day uh, to, to do that experiment, but that's the type of work that's going to be with you for years. You know, Right. I've, so seen, tents in, I've seen tents in Texas that's uh, like a red dirt. Uh, yes. and a tank could be up for just a few days and it comes down all, all red. And that's like a different kind of, we get a lot of pollen and stuff up in New York and tree sap. So it would be a different chemical for both of those. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. You cool. know, so I think somebody who's washing by hand, you know, usually it's either the owner washing it by hand or they're paying somebody or, or a combination of both. So every, every labor stroke that you can do away with, you know, somebody sitting there with their, with their hands or their mop or their floor polish or whatever, um, that's money in your pocket. So spending a little bit, a little bit of time to understand what kind of chemical is key. It doesn't necessarily have to be a more expensive chemical, just finding the right chemical. Okay, cool. So with, for, for people that have room to lay them out in their warehouse or outside, um, you can use a floor polisher, right? Yes. And if yes. you who don't um, know floor polisher, that's what it looks like. Yeah, and that's you know that that there's you can buy them from eight hundred bucks to twelve thirteen hundred dollars uh, for a nice one, and you know they take a little bit of use you used to take about forty five minutes to kind of learn how to use it, um, and I wouldn't use it on a new tent when you when you're learning there, but uh, you know for that kind of investment you are definitely saving a lot of time and you will not scrub it any cleaner, uh, you can't get it cleaner by just doing it by hand like this. There's there's no question about it, you know. Right. That floor polisher, you got different kind of pads you can put on there. If you got some real aggressive dirt, you just need to really get off there. It can be a more aggressive pad. Very easily just kind of stick them on there. Um, you got about three different selections that come in colors, uh, blue, white, red, red, white, and blue. Uh, and, and you can feel the different, you know, one more fine and one's more aggressive. So you can kind of dial in the pad for what you're doing. Right. An important thing if you're using the floor polisher is to make sure that underneath your tent, you're most likely gonna put it on a tarp, but underneath your tent and tarp, there's no stones or no nothing, cause that can, the high RPMs on it can rip, you know, if there's a stone on there, it can rip it up. That's absolutely true, you know, which, uh, which is another thing I see a lot of times, you know, people will be washing on a surface uh, that's not uh, as smooth as it, as it could be or should be. You know, the best surface to, to, to wash on is a surface like the countertop on your desk or something that's smooth. Right. You know, if you have some polished concrete or whatever. But I realize that that kind of surface is expensive to get. Um, but to your point, Adam, you know, when you take a look at the, the bristles, either on the, the, the floor polish or a brush or whatever, and they're trying to come in to a divot there, like in my hand here, yeah. you know, they, they, down in there ever so slightly like if you're doing on asphalt or, or brushed concrete you're not going to get a clean result right now when people don't have the room um i've seen people and this is how we actually clean our sides we set up tables uh and have it kind of laid out in an accordion style and pull it and then do it by hand um yes. actually for our sides i use i have king tables which are 48 by 8 and we just set up two of those next to each other. And so a whole side is on the, on the tables and then we do it by hand and then flip it. Yep. But 
What so, I like about that method is is you you can actually do that, and you won't be dousing with a lot of chemical. You could actually find some chemicals that pretty pretty good at getting all the dirt off, um, and you want to dry the thing at that point. So that's a huge benefit for somebody who doesn't have a lot of space. Right. At the end of the day, the space is really taken up by drying. You know, and right. if you're now, washing by hand. Uh, using a, uh, I think the, the most underused tool we have in our industry is a little hand polisher. Like this? Just like that. Yep. You know, and, and the hand polisher, you notice in your picture there, you've got the orange pad that's on there. And then right, right below it down there is, is a is a white pad. Well, that orange pad is, in fact, I've got a picture of one here. Uh, it, it's, this has got Velcro to it, you know, and you can get different pads just like a floor polisher. One's more aggressive like this, this uh, a red one here, less aggressive like the yellow one. This one's got a bunch of mold on it, uh, but you can take and take those pads and you could come right off of there, you know? Right. And these, these are really good ones, like $400, but man, it beats the heck out of sitting and scrubbing it by hand. You get a, a dual action one where now it goes in circles, but it rotates up long and you're going to go a long way uh, and scrubbing those tents pretty quick and get it pretty deep clean. Right. Um, yeah, I got to get one of those right now. We've just been using magic erasers, which the magic erasers do work really well. Um, those are awesome. Uh, yeah. yeah. Do they sell magic eraser pads for those? Uh, I, I haven't seen that. Right. I wonder how fast they would come apart on there. Yeah. Uh, I bought, some, I bought yeah, some pads for a drill, a magic magic eraser, not the magic eraser brand, but, you know, just the melamine um, foam for a drill. And they do okay. I, I kind of mostly just use them for um, different, different things that are harder to clean. Um, when we clean our sides, we just do the magic races by hand, but I got to get one of these. It'll be a lot faster. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, we have a first question about your, about the machine. How often is it recommended to wash a tent in the machine? Um, what are your other options? Well, that's, we just went over the other options, but is there any recommendation to how much you should wash, how much you could wash a tent in a, in a Tico machine? You know, I've got customers who wash it every time. I got customers who wash them two or three times a year. Um, right. You know, one of the one of the biggest kind of funny complaints I get from the owners after they buy the machine six months, nine months later, is that the guys want to wash it every time because they want to get it, get it clean. Um, right. So, you know, to say you know how often should you wash it, it's just I think falls into the category of what's the image of the company. What's kind of the, the, from a business standpoint, does it make sense from a financial to have people, you know, push it in there or, or not? Um, right. I've, I heard of a company that um, every time their tank comes down, they put it in because when they take it down, they don't even bother with tarps or anything and waste time putting tarps all underneath the tent. They just take it down on the grass and put it in. Yes. Um, they thought that was a better option than wasting time with tarps. When I owned my rental company before we, that's how I got started in this, in this, uh, in the wash machine world. Um, I did the exact same thing. You know, all my smaller stuff, 40 foot wide and below, actually my 30 foot wide and below, I mostly did it with exactly that. You know, I, I started timing the people taking them down and watch how time they, you know, would roll them up. And I started timing all that and what it cost me, you know, I could, I could throw the wash machine, shoot it back out and uh, it would go up. You know, I know there's a lot of, you talk about different scenarios and companies, um, you know, that's kind of one of them that, that crops up, people might adopt. Uh, the other one that's really effective for um, smaller and medium sized companies uh, has to do with their inventory control. You know, typically smaller and medium sized companies have great inventory control. So when they get real busy uh, and they get a pile of dirty tents, it really slows them down. You know, cause if you got a really busy weekend that rained all weekend, and you got tents coming back Monday and Tuesday and you know we're going to be, you know, wet and full of mold or uh, uh, pollen and, and mud. You Typically, it takes you two or three weeks to kind of catch up with that, you know. Right. But if you if you have a wash machine, this is where it comes in really handy because you could throw pop it in the wash machine. Just run a real quick kind of 15, 20 minute rinse on it only. And you're right back to where you were. You know that previous Wednesday when you put it up is a new one. So that that you know a lot of guys saying well, let's wash it all the time, but they're not really giving it a full wash every time. They're just spending the whole season just popping it right back up to that A grade throughout the season real quickly and never having a dirty pile. So they do wash it every time, but they may not put a full wash on it. And, and what that allows them to do, especially on their smaller stuff, in their busy time they may be stretched for space to hang it, to dry it. 
So they'll actually go ahead and just go ahead and put it up wet. So, you know, it'd be the first, it'd be the first one in on Monday or Tuesday and the first one out on Wednesday or Thursday, a little bit more of a pain in the field to, to deal with it. Uh, if it's a little bit bigger, a 30 foot wide or a 40 foot wide. Um, but if you do the calculation, sometimes uh, that cost for the, that pain is less than dealing with it in the, in the warehouse and, and, and disrupting your flow in the warehouse during a busy time. So right. it, that, there are different scenarios of how often people wash them is, is the answer. Right. Like when, if we have to wash like a 20 wide, I'll wash it the day before, put it back in its bag wet. That way I don't have to hang it or set it up or anything. And then we'll go set it up and it'll be wet, but it'll be dry um, when it's up. Uh, when my friend lets me use his washing machine, which he generally doesn't charge me, uh, I don't want to waste his time and space trying to hang. So we'll go out the day before, wash a 40 wide um, right before it goes up and then bring it, bring it back wet and set it up. Yeah, I know when I was in, I'm in St. Louis and we owned our rental company, you know, something the first washing machine that we built was for us. Uh, we used to do that for our competitors. You know, they were really busy and they'd throw it in. We wouldn't even, we wouldn't even fold it up. We, they would just bring us a bin. We'd throw it in the bin and charge them for it and out the door, you know. Right. Um, were there washing machines that existed before you started making yours? Like tent washers? Uh, there was, there was, um, uh, there was a gentleman out of North Carolina and I can't remember his name. He had refurbished a few old machines from like the fifties. Okay. Um, we've done a few of those over the past 20 years. Um, he took them, uh, slowed the RPMs down, changed the drum quite a bit. Uh, he did a handful of those. You know, the problem was he, the supply line, it was hard to find him. Um, right. and, and each one was a different, each one was a different design, you know, and then a little bit later, uh, there was a craze in the 80s uh, for stone washing blue jeans. And uh, there were some machines built for doing that. So okay. some people had bought those machines uh, to wash their tents in. But they spun a little bit too fast, uh, and they were they were damaging the tents and stuff. Um, we've actually gotten ran across a few of those in our in our 20 years. In fact, we've got one now. We take them, and we, we slow the RPMs way down, change a few things on them so that they are safe for tents. But... Uh, Really, those are the two places that before I started that were doing it. Right, I seen one. We went to an auction, and some guy had this really huge machine, and it like tipped forward and dumped them out afterwards. Mm -hmm. It was a tent. I don't remember who made it though. Yeah. But um, yeah. now you talk about damaging the tents. Uh, so when I use my friend's washer, we zip tie all the jump ropes real tight to the metal um, parts on the tent, and uh, I know sometimes there's there's also rubber covers you can put on. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, Go ahead. Oh, so uh, one time we didn't zip tie well enough on a 30 by 60, all the cen center uh, mm -hmm. jump ropes all got tangled up and it was a nightmare unrolling it. So yeah, yeah. you, you want to zip tie those up. Otherwise it's going to get all messed up. Yes, absolutely. You know, there's a couple of things you want to watch out when you're washing with a machine. That's certainly one of them. You know, when you wrap your ropes up, you wrap them around your hand like a donut. And then you uh, you take a zip tie and you don't you don't go around the whole donut you go around the middle of the donut to the one end and zip tie that it won't come apart then you know it's a little trick um, right. but it's definitely something there you know here we we got a question is it true the more you wash the more the shiny finish comes off the vinyl I've seen people claim that over time you know shiny finish is going to come off the vinyl no matter what I mean the only way to keep the shiny finish on is not is never put it up. Never drag it across anything, never expose it to the sun, never wash it. Um, so at some point, you have to make a decision about your inventory, how hard it's going to work for you. So it's coming off uh, at some point. If you put it in a washing machine, you can, there are things about a washing machine that you can speed up your, uh, damage your tent real quick. The easiest way to take that, that shiny stuff off is to use too hot or too cold a water. If you use too hot a water, it starts delaminating the fabric. And any coating that gets put on there, right? Okay. Every manufacturer does a lamination or their coating process a little bit different, or their 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 final coat a little bit different. So different temperatures are for different manufacturers are going to affect it differently. Also, to cold the water, when you start tumbling that around the machine, the fabric is is just stiff. It's like for you people in the northern parts of the country, you know what it means to put a, a tent up on the cold uh, cold day, and it's hard. You can't work with it. So the same thing when you're washing too cold a water. Now you, that stiff material is rubbing up against that, that stainless steel, and the stainless steel is always going to win, so you're going to rub it off. So we, we wash between 95 and 105 degrees. 
that will take care of it, safely take care of all your fabric that's your your cheaper laminates all the way up to your your very nice coated fabrics and take care of you know really slowing down that process of of, of, of taking that shine off of there you know the other thing to do I see some people have washing machines uh, where the RPMs are way higher. You know, if you look at a linen machine, like that one you were talking about before, Adam, it was a linen machine. I remember you doing a video on it, and I, I saw that. Um, the linen machines tend to, to, the RPMs are a lot faster than a tent washing machine. So then you're going to get some a lot more agitation against the drum and, and the fabric. And again, you're going to have that type of, of degradation. So... You know, when you're using a washing machine, you got to use the right temperature. You got to use the right RPMs, the right type of drum to it. Um, and you've also got to rinse in, 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 in warm every time, right? Some people want to wash in, in warm only and then rinse in cold. But you're definitely going to deteriorate that tent over time and do exactly what the question talked about there. Right. You know? Now, um, if that's for a, a washing machine, when you're doing floor or by hand, um, is it best to use warm water as well? Well, I don't, you, it, it'd be great if you could use warm water washing by floor on the floor or by hand. You know, if you used warm water, you're probably going to use something like a, a, a pressure washer, a heated pressure washer. But the difficulty is you're never really going to be able to uh, benefit from it because when you spray the water on the on the surface, this the, the surface is a different different temperature. It's much cooler even on a warm day. And it's going to immediately take all the water, the uh, heat out of the water, and and put it into the vinyl or even the floor up underneath it, right? right. So unlike a wash machine, a wash machine it's got to self-contain. You're submerged in in water the whole tent, the whole time gets the heat, and the heat is important because it reacts with the chemical and makes the chemical act a little bit better. It's no different than think about when I was when I was a, a, a child, my mom had me wash the dishes. Um, and I would never change the water out and my water would get cold. You know, she'd right. come by and drain the water out and make me wash the dishes over again in warm water because warm water clean better. Right. So when you're washing by hand, it's kind of impossible to get you to use the warm water um, uh, as, 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 as a good cleaning source for you, you know. But washing by hand, one of the things I see, especially with the polishers, is people won't put, they'll, they'll go over spaces where there, there's not a whole lot of water or almost no water. Now you're now you turn the now what you've done is you turn that polishing pad into a sander, right? You know, okay. And you're definitely taking the, you're definitely taking the surface off at that point. So okay. leaving that lubricant there of the soap and water or even the rinse water is very important. Right. Uh, we have someone who seems to own one. What recommendations do you have for washing a clear, just a clear top in a Tico 1800? Um, the clear is to wash really well. I, I don't like to wash the really inexpensive clear stuff. When I was washing and when I had my own rental company, uh, I was buying really, really thin, the cheapest clear sidewall I could find because we would use it once or twice and kind of throw it out. Um, and it didn't work real well in the washing machine. It got foggy and the fog never came out. But if you're dealing with the better vinyls now, the thicker stuff, that's a little bit better. Um, in 20 years, I haven't had one complaint about it um, you know, getting clean. The one thing that clear does, it, the struggle you have with clear, whether you're washing a machine or washing by hand, is the spots. Uh, and this, you, they have the same exact problem when you wash linen, I mean, uh, uh, glasses in your dishwasher at home, right? If you got hard water, you, see, you take them out and they're clean, but they got these spots all over. And the spots right. are from the impurities in the water. They dry, the, the water dries off, the impurities are left, right? You have the same exact problem when you're washing a clear in whether by hand or in a washing machine. But with a washing machine, one of the nice things that you can do on that last rinse, right before you're ready to pull it out, you put one rinse on it, you can actually add to the washing machine uh, the same stuff that you would add in your dishwasher at home. It's called, you know, you know, my, there's a brand called Jet Dry, go to Walmart and buy whatever that is. You know, it's a little bit goes a long way. And what that's gonna allow you to do is take that tent top out of that clear tent top and hang it up and you'll notice that those droplets are going to start falling off there pretty easily and it's that jet dry that's doing it you see the same thing if you ever drive your car through a car wash when you drive it through the car wash the last spray they put on your car is this chemical similar to to, uh, to jet dry it, 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 it breaks down the surface tension of the water and you s then the blowers come up and blow that water over your windshield it's doing the same exact thing so if we add the jet dry to the last rinse and then hang it up we then can get the we can get the droplets off the the the, the fabric and they won't dry and leave a spot you know right. so that's the really nice thing we can do on a, with a washing machine right so if a company already has um 
dishes and they're doing that, they probably also already have the rinse aid. Absolutely. Uh, do whatever it is, they use that. Yeah, yeah. You can just keep getting that from your dishwashing supply company. Um, yeah. The generic name for it, I think is like some sort of rinse aid. Totally. Unless exactly. you have a, a high temperature one, you might not have the rinse aid, but right. But generally you do because yeah, yeah, you have the spots and then you got to hand polish them off. Otherwise people complain. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and the other nice thing about a washing machine is the fabric's coming out nice and warm. Your droplets are warm. So they're going to tend to flash off a little bit faster too for you. So right. that all helps. You know. Now you have this interesting product. I forget what it's called. Dry. Some, I forget. Dry wash. Dry wash. It's, yes. You can clean a tent and it's not wet, right? Correct. Okay. And I, I really developed it more for, um, you know, people who are hand washing, don't have a washing machine. Over, over, over the years, they get a tent that's white and they think they've got it clean until they put it up next to a brand new white one. Right. And they stand back and they realize, wow, that's got a tinge gray on it that doesn't look clean at all. Right. right. Or if you stick a mid next to an end, one that's new and one that's you know a couple years old, you see it. You know, it looks horrible. Um, and other than that, you know, it, it just gets gray, but structurally the tent's sound, right? In a washing machine, that all gray gets cleaned up. But if you don't have a washing machine, what are you going to do? That's why I developed the dry, dry wash. So you use this product with the hand polish that we talked about earlier, or the floor polisher, and you'll actually get that gray off of there and you get it back to white. You know, I had a customer call me in uh, in July. They were out of temp tops and his his, uh, his salesperson sold a, you know, a wedding and he had like one that was all gray and he just set his guys to work and they were able to get it back to A. You know, so it's, it goes back to that sense of chemicals, you know, knowing your chemicals, knowing your type of dirt and having an arsenal of chemicals and knowing how to use them is really important. But that's where the dry wash really comes in. It's now you got to use no water. You put it on there and then you can just wipe it up and you're ready to roll. Right. And you have some cool videos on your website about that. You actually take some tape and I think you spell out Tico and then you yeah. clean up around it and you take it off and you can really see the difference. Yeah, we do. So what is your website if anyone wants to go visit it? Yeah, it's uh, www.ticosolutions.com. You know, I've got a whole learning section in there. talks about different tips and tricks that we're going over tonight, plus a lot more, you know, things like how to get leaf stains off, how to get tar and tape off, different uh, met methods of washing like we're talking about tonight, how to use a floor polisher. And I've probably got five or six other videos on there. I've got videos that have to do with business, running, a, running you know, the financial side of the, of the um, uh, uh, business. Um, I do business, you know, frequently asked questions about washing machines. Uh, so I got a whole learning kind of section on there, frequently asked questions section on there. Uh, we've got a store where you can buy all the different chemicals, the, the polishers, the floor polishers, the hand polishers, pretty much everything for cleaning. You know, it's, it's on there for you. So, right. Uh, this guy right here, this is his name is Jordan, A1 Century Tents and Events. He's down in Texas. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think in Texas, I might be wrong. I think he, he bought a company. I think they have one of your washers. And he wants to know if you can... Uh, clean the straps with the hooks or metal. I'm guessing his, ra I'm guessing he's talking about his ratchet straps. Would they, yeah. he wants to know if it'll melt it or will it damage the straps? What, I, what you do, you do a great job on the straps, but you want to, what you want to do is you want to put all those straps in a mesh bag and tie it. So you all just throw them in there and tie it shut and throw that in there with whatever you're washing, right. but make sure that you get all the chemicals rinsed out of there. Right? So if you're using some pretty nice chemicals to get, get the thing clean, Always sample your water, your rinse water, to make sure that before you take it out of there, you got – because if you don't, your straps are key to keeping your whole tent up, right, keeping it in place. So what happens when chemicals uh, get embedded in straps or webbing on your tent, over time, the, the chemical's in there, and the sun starts hitting it, and, it, and that's when the, the, the threads start breaking down. And, you know, six months later, nine months later, that's when your strap's going to break or your webbing is going to give way or your stitching is going to give way. If you've been in the tent business for a number of years, somewhere along the line, you've experienced that some stitching giving way. And it's definitely caused by chemical left in there. But with a washing machine, you can rinse multiple times in good, in good, clean, warm water and make sure you get all the rinsed off. So yes, I would definitely wash my straps. Right. And you don't have to take the metal off. You just throw them right in, in that mesh. You bag. Don't. I've got guys who don't wash their ratchet straps, some to do, you know, if they come out of there, you're going to, I wouldn't leave them wet for a long time. I'd spray them down with WD-40 to kind of drive that, drive the water out of the mechanism. If you did that, um, I, I'm probably yeah. on the fence about whether I would do it or not. I was going to ask you a question because you mentioned it, 
but this guy just typed it. So what's the best way to get out the leaf stains without sun bleaching and setting tent upside down? Is there a chemical you recommend to add into the Tico washer or just by hand? Um, every This goes back to the different type of soils, right? Every leaf is a little bit different. An oak leaf here in St. Louis is horrible when you fold it up wet. It is hard to get out, right? So sometimes different leaves in different parts of the country come out easy with the sun bleaching. Uh, sometimes you can put, um, just use like a, a good acid. I, I like to use a good toilet bowl cleaner, a brand called Snowball. Snow, Snowball is the cheapest one you can find at Walmart. You know, and I just put it on there and I let it sit for a while. This is not something you do in the washing machine. The washing machine is not going to really take care of leaf stains for you. Um, but let the Snowball sit on there. And if that don't take it off and or the sun bleaching doesn't take it off, really it's, it's probably not going to come off. Uh, what I would do then is mask it. Uh, there's a product, uh, it's, it's called Vinyl Ink. Uh, we carry it on our website, but you can get other places too. And it's, 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 it's the ink that is used to uh, make banners. Like in modern day, they have printers that print, print banners or print billboards. And the ink that's used in that, you know, it doesn't come off if you've ever, if you've ever seen a printed banner. In the old, before, before uh, when people used to hand paint those, they used the same kind of vinyl ink, you know, with a brush. And the nice thing about that is it doesn't come off in a washing machine. If you paint it on a really nice clean surface over a leaf stain, it's not coming off. You can actually buy a thinner then and thin it out if you want, because the consistency is really thick. It's like a really thick Elmer's glue, but you can thin it out and kind of brush it on there and, 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 and fade it into the tint because uh, it'll, it'll be a really nice white spot for you. Well, how, do, how do you thin it out? Uh, no different than like thinning any other paint that you would have, you know, okay. it's, it's special thinner that they sell with it. Uh, you just keep adding to it and gets the more you add, the, the more thin it gets. Um, All right. And do you sell that and the thinner? We do. Yeah. We okay. sell both of those. You know, that, that product, by the way, is really good for pinholes too. You know, it's, right. it's phenomenal for pinholes because, you know, I was talking to a gentleman today and he said, well, you know, the stuff I use, it's great. I, and then next week I put the same 10 up, I'm patching the same hole, it comes off, you know. Right. Um, I got a tip for people with pinholes. I saw some guy do it. Uh, he set the tent up and then the customer noticed a pinhole or two. Uh, but the tent's already up. So he uh, took like a Q-tip looking thing, made it a little bit bigger, uh, taped it to a center pole and put it up. You know, I think he might have had to stand on a ladder here or there, but uh, put it up and sealed up those pinholes without having to take the tent down. <laughs> Love it. Um, we have is just suggesting from Josh saying rapid remover is great for leaf stains. He's from ACC Party Rental, Columbus, Ohio. Mm -hmm. But all right, well, that's basically it. I don't like to keep these too long. Uh, we'll end with this last comment. Uh, you should write a book with all these tips. <laughs> oh, you you mentioned that. Uh, we have a book. I wrote a book about this. Um, you can go to my website. It's free if you just want to sign up for it. Uh, it's, I think, on the first homepage there. Just fill out a form. We'll mail it to you for free. But it has a lot of these tips in there. There you go. And yeah. You and your company don't mind talking to smaller companies because you understand that at some point they may become a bigger company. And, I absolutely do. You know, and, that's, that's why we did our, our smaller machines. We have a trade up policy to get them to a bigger one as they grow. They can have a machine for three years and trade up. But yes, we love to talk to smaller companies. Right. So even though they may not need it right now, they can still talk to you and understand it so that once they do grow to that point, there's a relationship there already and they can call you up and, and get going. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. That's all we do. All right. Well, everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you for the questions. And go check out TicoSolutions.com. They have a bunch of videos and um, that book, too, because uh, cleaning tents is important. It's like when someone drives up, they see that. Or when they're underneath and they look up at a wedding, they don't want to see milled, mold and mildew. And that needs to be beautiful because people are paying for their nice wedding day or whatever it is. Yes. Thank you all. Appreciate your time. All right. Thank you and have a good night. Bye-bye.